GM Construct is a map every Garry's Mod player is familiar with. Even if you just bought the game to try out all the wacky multiplayer servers with your friends, it's more likely than not you launched into this map at least once. This map is the sandbox to get your bearings as a new player. You spawn in and directly in front of you is a wide open space, just begging to be used as a canvas for your creativity. For those not familiar with Gary's Mod, there's no objective or goal in a vanilla server. You're just put into a map and given a menu to spawn models, characters, vehicles, whatever. Maybe you build a little scene. Maybe you spawn in three dozen zombies and run around shooting them. Or maybe you spawn in as many bouncy balls as you can. The only limit is your imagination. What I particularly like about GM Construct is that it's not just an open space. There's a ton of little areas and buildings to inspire you. Back in 2010, when I first got into the game, I remember spending a ton of time decorating areas like there were an office or a bedroom. I'd set up checkpoints as if it were a zombie defense map. GM Construct was a map I became intimately familiar with. I didn't mess around with roleplay servers or prison escape servers. I just hung out in these empty maps and built things. I feel like I can't talk about Construct and Gary's Mod Maps as a whole without bringing up the unsettlingness of them? Is that a word? But whatever, you know what I mean. I know this aspect of Gmod Maps has been talked about a lot on YouTube, so I won't spend too much time on it, but it is worth bringing up. There's this sense of unease when playing Gary's Mod Maps by yourself. In the case of GM Construct, just the setting is weird. There's all these completely empty apartment buildings, what looks like a warehouse of some sort. Inside of that you have this pure white room, as well as one that's pitch black. It feels unfinished. I'm not saying that to disparage the developer anything, I'm thinking about this as a real place, in world. It's like they constructed the outsides of these buildings, but forgot to do anything with the interior. There's this imposing building that looks like it could house a ton of people, but it's completely hollow. It's an imitation of something we see in everyday life, ever so slightly off. Construct seems like a pretty simple map, but there's a lot of covert spots. This is a place I'd never think to go when messing around in this map by myself. Or you could sneak up to the top floor of this apartment building. And there's a ton of balconies on all the others. You could tell someone you hid this watermelon somewhere and they'd have a hard time finding it. And of course, there's a cute little credits room tucked away. This is not the GM construct I played back in the day though. It's been updated over the years, adding various buildings and expanding the play space. Fortunately, the titular Gary has uploaded all the older versions to the Steam Workshop so we can explore them in the current year. GM Construct 3 is the oldest version available. It's crazy how simple of a map this is, yet it still feels connected to the modern version of the map. I think it's the textures, along with the mixing of the stone path and grass, that give this a construct feel. It's so functional and plain. At this point in the game's life, I'm sure the developers were more focused on getting the core systems down rather than making their one map look nice. Which is fine, they had plenty of years to iterate. GM Construct 6 is where the map starts to better resemble the one we're familiar with today. The pool over here, the garage, thing. These elevated stone paths were a cornerstone of constructs throughout the years, only to be mostly absent in the new version. Slowly, Construct is starting to look less like a map to debug the game, and more like a map that was intentionally designed. Construct 10 is the one I spent the most time with as a kid. It's interesting that at some point, whoever was greenlighting these map changes was happy with this layout and decided to just add on to it for later versions. Which I respect. You spawn in after starting a new server and you're given this view. It's simple, but iconic. And while the view from the newer map is definitely different, there are some similar elements. The stone and grass, blue sky, buildings in the distance. GM Construct has changed throughout the years, but in a lot of ways, it stayed the same.
allow me to take you on a journey towards the uncanny as we look at maps inspired by GM Construct. Bizarre view, right? This is GM Construct Redesign. There's so many recognizable aspects to this map, but it's so different. There's this new stone structure, some steps, a bunch of shipping containers, as well as this uh, passage that leads into some spooky tunnels. It's GM Construct from a parallel universe. It's weird to think that the official additions to GM Construct seem so normal to me. Like, of course they added a few more buildings and another level. It's easy to imagine that parallel universe where this is the official redesign. All the shipping containers and dark tunnels would just be normal. GM Megastruct? Maybe not so much. I can't imagine this type of redesign ever replacing the original. Look at all this space. For as big as Construct has gotten over the years, they've shown some restraint in not tripling the size of the map. And some of the design decisions are bizarre. You get in close to these buildings and they have such weird shapes. I saw this odd pattern and I didn't even know what to say. I've sat here for like five minutes and I still don't know what to take from these parts of the buildings sticking out. It makes me uncomfortable. Okay, I'm pulling out the big guns now. GM Genesis. This is barely even Construct anymore. And yeah, I know it's missing textures, I could try and fix it, but seeing this pattern in the map is part of the Garry's Mod experience. Deal with it. What all does this map have? A strip for drag racing. Some complex, for roleplaying servers I assume. A giant platform that rises up at the push of a button. Winding tunnels. Oh, and of course, a massive underground racetrack as well as probably a dozen other areas I completely missed. I almost think it's funny how Construct is such a simple map, meant to be nothing more than a canvas to inspire you to do whatever you feel like doing, with a couple points of interest to nudge you in certain directions if you need help. And map makers? They go nuts. They forego all subtlety and restraint in an effort to make the most biggest map that's sparsely decorated, but paradoxically also dense. There will be wide open spaces, then a cluster of buildings or rooms. It's such a specific aesthetic, but that's what I think of when I think of Gary's Mod. Alright, we're done with GM Construct and its inbred cousins, for now. Let's go to... Ah! RP Downtown V4C. Home to many... Oof. Okay, give me a second. Hmm. Good enough. Home to many servers running roleplay mods. This is a map I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. While I didn't play on a lot of RP servers back in the day, I occasionally jumped on with some friends. It was so cool seeing people build their little spaces all across the map. You have the center of town where police and mayors would hang out. Then you have the warehouses further out where criminals would hole up. And everywhere in between is where the normal citizens live. It's a real downtown with actual districts that people sort themselves into. RP servers are their own little societies, and you can see how the map designers here encourage that playstyle. This is obviously intended to be a jail. And these are the affordable apartments. There's something pure about everyone deciding to play along and pretend like they're renting out little apartments. Much like Construct, this is a map brimming with spots to build in. So many rooms and buildings to inspire you to decorate them in a certain way. It's all very dense. This is GM Big City. Look, you'll get used to the missing texture thing. Much in a similar way to downtown, this map goes for an urban feel. But where that map had nearly all buildings available to enter, this map has almost no interiors. There's only a handful of buildings you can enter, and even then, only a room or two are available, or you'll just be plopped on the roof. This fits into a genre of map that perplexes me. I guess some of the GM Construct-inspired maps are similar. 
This feels like a map to just explore. There's so many streets and tall buildings, I don't really feel inspired to build or create. I just want to walk down the sidewalk and take in the scenery. The densely packed buildings aren't all of the map. There's a section with a bunch of warehouses and a sewage treatment area. But the narrow streets are what stick out to me. GM Mega City is that, with the dial turned up to 11. It's practically all narrow city streets tucked between skyscrapers. This feels like a place you could actually get lost in. Forgive me for bringing up the already beaten dead horse, but it feels backroomsy. Walking down the street, everything kind of blends together. I'm imagining a map like this that procedurally generates new buildings and streets for every corner you turn. Dozens of corners and alleyways for you to take, but nothing stands out as a point of interest. A never-ending city. The skybox does a pretty good job at making the city seem bigger than it is. Up here, at the very top of the map, it's intimidating. Fly up a bit and the actual playable space is revealed. Still a lot of area to wander around, but the extra couple layers of buildings at the edges really make a difference in making the map feel… well, mega. Our penultimate stop is a bizarre one, to say the least. We're going to a location we've actually visited before. Peach's Castle from Super Mario 64. I love this genre of map. Someone takes an iconic location from another game and recreates it in a new engine. It's uncanny exploring these maps. Like here, the scale feels slightly off. Or maybe it's normal and Mario's just a tiny dude. Either way, playing from this perspective is weird. And the lighting! Look at the slight reflection of the green grass on the castle. No way you'd be seeing that on a Nintendo 64. And the lighting is off in this room too. Also, no fishies in the tanks. I feel like I have to say this in every video where I make observations like that, but I'm not knocking the designer for not getting every single detail right. There's obviously a lot of differences at the core of the Source engine in Super Mario 64, where things just look different. Or maybe the map creator intentionally makes decisions to steer away from the original, whatever. I'm just here to point out the differences, I'm not here to make a value judgement on them. All the little differences here make this version of Peach's Castle unique from the castle in Super Mario 64, as well as different from recreations of the castle in other games. We've looked at all kinds of complex maps, but you know what? Let's end on a calm note. The original, GM Flatgrass. This is the other map that comes pre-installed with the game. And I'm specifying the original version because it did get an update at some point. All it added was this structure and a skybox that makes the map seem much bigger than it actually is. I prefer the simpleness of the original. It's so effortless. All it has is a simple platform in the middle, a flat plane of grass, and a baby blue skybox that doesn't trick you into thinking the map is miles wide. This map is, is just so raw. Like the early versions of GM Construct, this is pure function over form. No distractions to get between you and your creative ambitions. I remember joining random servers back in the day that were running GM Flatgrass. I'd join, and more often than not, it'd just be a couple people hanging out, shooting the shit while they designed weird vehicles to crash into each other, or adding a dozen thrusters to a chair their friend is sitting in and launching them into space. That was the essence of Gary's mod. And it... hold on a sec. Is that platform off-center? Huh. I'll leave you with this note left by Teikoto, the creator of GM Construct Redesign. Check out my tour of Minecraft for a look at another sandbox game. 
It's different covering one of these compared to Mario 64 or Final Fantasy 7, but I appreciate them nonetheless. Thanks for watching and see you next time.